Hi, welcome back to Forty Gauge Nevadas. We are on day 16. The next part is Justin Martyr's first apology, which is his chapters 48 to 59. In these chapters today, Justin is continuing with his long exposition of the prophecies concerning Christ, covering every aspect of the life, ministry and death of Jesus. He quotes scripture at length to fully prove his points in order to show the emperor to whom he writes, and indeed any of us reading his works today, the undeniable reality that Jesus was the expected and long-awaited Messiah. I won't quote massive amounts of the chapters since it would be redundant, so I'll just highlight each prophecy and give the scriptural references which are used in first apology as proofs of Jesus' messiahship. Finding the actual scriptural quotes to reference is sometimes a bit difficult because Justin has a habit of combining various verses from different chapters of the same prophet into one sentence. Uh, the following scripture quotes are taken from first apology and are written as Justin wrote them. Christ's death and uh, life foretold. Jesus' life and ministry foretold from a combination of Isaiah 35 verses 5 to 6, Isaiah 32 verse 4, and Isaiah 26 verse 19. He says, At his coming the lame shall leap as a heart, and the tongue of the stammerer shall be clear speaking. The blind shall see, the leper shall be cleansed, and the dead shall rise and walk about. And his death foretold from Isaiah 57 verse 1. Behold the righteous. Behold now the righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and just men are taken away, and no man considereth. For the presence of wickedness is the righteous man taken, and his burial shall be in peace. He is taken from our midst. And his rejection by the, few, the, the Jews foretold from Isaiah 65, verse 1 to 3. As Justin says, The words are spoken as from the person of Christ, and they are these. I was manifest to them that asked not for me. I was found of them that sought me not. I said, Behold me to a nation that called not on my name. I spread out my hands to a disobedient and gainsaying people. To those who walked in a way that is not good, but follow after their own sins. A people that provoketh me to anger to my face. For the Jews, having the prophecies and being always in expectation of the Christ to come, did not recognise him. Not only so, but even treated him shamefully. His prediction, oh, his, prediction his humiliation predicted taken from Isaiah 52 verse 13 to 15 and Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 8. Because they delivered his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors, he has borne the sins of many and shall make intercession for the transgressors. For behold, my servant shall deal prudently and shall be exalted and shall be greatly extolled. And many were astonished at thee, so marred shall thy form be before men and so hidden from them thy glory. So shall many nations wonder, and the kings shall shut their mouths at him. For they to whom it was not told concerning him, and they who have not heard shall understand. O Lord, how hath, who has believed, believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? We have declared before him as a child, as a root in the dry ground. He had no form nor glory, and we saw him. There was no form or comeliness, but his form was dishonoured and marred, more than the sons of men. A man under the stroke, and knowing how to bear infirmity, because his face was turned away. He was despised and of no reputation. It is he who bears our sins and, and is afflicted for us. Yet we did esteem him smitten, stricken and afflicted, but he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Every man has wandered his own way, and he delivered him for our sins, and he opened not his mouth for all his, for all his affliction. 
He was brought as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearer is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. The Majesty of Christ, taken from Isaiah 53, verses 8 to 12. His generation who shall declare, because his life is cut off from the earth, for their trans transgressions he comes to death, and I will give the wicked for his burial, and the rich for his death, because he did no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth, and the Lord is pleased to cleanse him from the strife. If he be given for sin, your soul shall see his seed prolonged in days. And the Lord is pleased to deliver his soul from grief, to show him light, and to form him with knowledge, to justify the righteous who richly serves many. And he shall bear our iniquities, therefore he shall inherit many. And he shall divide the spoil of the strong, because his soul was delivered to death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sins of many, and he was delivered up for their transgressions. The Ascension of Christ, from Psalm 24, verses 7 to 10. Lift up the gates of heaven, be opened, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory, the Lord, strong and mighty? From this point on, Justin argues that since he has proven that prophecies of old have come to pass, and it follows that those which are yet to come shall to come to pass shall certainly happen. Which is, means the general resurrection and punishments from Ezekiel 37 verses 7 to 8 and Isaiah 45 20, verse 24. Joint shall be joint to joint and bone to bone. The flesh shall grow again and every knee shall bow to the Lord and every tongue shall confess him. And Isaiah 66 verse 24. Their worm shall not rest, and their fire shall not be quenched. The closing chapters of this section deal mostly with an argument against the Roman god Jupiter, and how that, even though it is related to the people that some are called sons of Jupiter by the prophet, the poets, this is done without such proof as being presented by about Jesus, yet people believe it. For with what reason should we believe a crucified man? Justin argues, unless we had found testimonies concerning him published before he came and was born a man, and had seen those things fulfilled. Justin makes the point, again, that these other gods were inspired by demons, though not simply by random, but by using ancient prophecies about Christ as a source to include a seed of truth within. This was done in order to, to deceive, Though the demons, misunderstanding the symbolism of the cross, never made any of their false gods die from crucifixion. Also, people like Plato, who alluded to a divine entity being placed crosswise at the centre of the universe, didn't understand it either, and was in fact borrowing from Moses, who wrote these things long before any of the Greek or Roman gods and prophets came along. There's a lot of doctrine and theology contained in these chapters, much of which is still very, very relevant for apologetics today, some of it which could even serve as a good starting point for in, an, in evangelistic outreach. So even if you're not that interested in apologetics or evangelising necessarily, I'd recommend everyone take time, some time to read these chapters and the preceding ones, as the prophetic statements about Jesus and their performance in him are the basis and foundation of our faith. And having a solid understanding with this is beneficial for all Christians in all times. Whew, that was a long one to read. Um, I hope you liked it. And if don't, um, don't get too bored listening to me. Go on. I'm reading lots of quotes. But yeah, he's he gives a lot of insight, not only to early Christianity, but just to basic Christianity and uh, the, all the doctrines we believe and should follow and um, yeah it's worth reading his actual text so you can get an idea of what he's really saying I've tried to summarize it as best I could to, so you get an idea of what's going on but it doesn't it's not a substitute for the actual text itself um, Tomorrow is 
the last part of Justin Martyr. So come back and see how it all ends. Like, subscribe, support me on Patreon, share the video, you know what to do. Thanks. Bye.